Are you looking for water softener maintenance tips and tricks to make sure your water softener lasts a long time for your family? Not sure where to start? Want some advice from the pros? Relax, this video's for you. Hi, I'm Gary the Water Guy, and I simplify water filtration to help you conquer crappy water for your family. Today, I'm being joined by Matthew from our tech team, and he's gonna help me share with you what to do when maintaining your water softener like a pro. By the end of this video, you'll know exactly how to figure out where to start, what you need to do, and how often, and what you should definitely avoid along the way. Really, the first step is to know what make and model of water softener you have to make sure you're servicing that model properly. Now, there are some nuances and some definite differences from different types of water softener. So the maintenance is somewhat different, although what needs to be done is pretty much the same. If you're not sure what make and model your water softener is, you can always email us some pictures at info at waterestore.com and we can check it out and let you know. Today we're talking about how to do the maintenance on the best in the business, and that's any water softener that uses the CLAC WS1 valve. Now these valves are used by countless different water softener manufacturers, including our own Hume brand, but also companies like Water Depot, Nelson, and a whole lot of others. Not sure if your water softener uses a CLAC valve? Well, they're pretty simple to identify. You need to look at the top. Don't look at the front here, look at the top. And when you look at the top, look at the bypass valve here. Now, if the bypass valve has these red handles, but not just any red handles, has these red handles with points on one end, Y at the other end, kind of looks like an arrow, then it's definitely a clack valve uh, water softener. And everything we talk about here today applies. Now, if you're not exactly sure how a water softener works, I definitely encourage you to check out my video. I'll put a link in the description down below. And I've included links in the description down below that takes you right to our CLAC water softeners and the CLAC replacement parts in case you need them to do maintenance on your water softener. Matthew, what's a water softener? A water softener is like this device behind us. Uh, it has media inside of the tank. Yeah. Um, it has a one inch tube that goes down. So the water passes through the valve and down over top of the media and then travels to the bottom of the tank through a little bit of gravel. And then there's a basket strainer at the bottom and it gets pushed up through the one inch tube and then onto your plumbing. Once it reaches the reserve amount of gallons that it's set for, or if you haven't used the amount of gallons that it's set for, it has a 14 day preset. So it will go into regeneration. The meter knows. So then it starts to suck up brine from the brine tank, which is salt and water. Salt and water makes brine. So it starts to suck up the water from the brine tank and regenerate itself. So it, it goes through the whole process, like Gary was saying earlier, the media, the salt and brine uh, releases the calcium from the, from the media and then flushes it to the drain, gets rid of all the, 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 the nasty stuff. And then it re, resets itself so that it's ready to go for another couple of days for your family. I know exactly. So, and so why would you want a water softener for your family? Keeps everything clean. So you don't have those standing on your showers uh, or your dishwasher. Um, it saves the life of all your appliances in your house. So if you have a dishwasher, if you have a tankless hot water heater, um, it, it will keep the lifespan of those for a long period of time. If your wife likes making tea, it'll get rid of those nasty stains inside of her tea kettle. It reduces the hardness of the water. So uh, less soap you would be using. Um, you'd use half the amount of soap that you would normally use if you didn't have a water softener. It's great for your family. Yeah, no, for sure. Matthew went through the whole process. You're looking for some more details. I've got a video down below. But you see in this um, in this thumbnail from this video, you see that pipe I'm holding? That's a two inch pipe that was totally clogged. Now it took a long time, it took almost 50 years to clog that, of uh, the hardness layers building up layer after layer after layer inside that pipe. It just doesn't coat inside of your tea kettle. It just doesn't coat a surface of water sitting around or around your faucet. It builds up layer after layer after yep. layer. And that's how it ends up clogging things like Matthew said, your dishwasher, other fixtures and things like that. And that's another thing too. Um, if you have a little bit of scale build up, like Gary was just explaining to you in that picture of the pipe, if you have a little bit of that and you introduce a water softener, a water softener will actually help get rid of some of that over a period of time. Yep, that's right. Stuff that's already there. Yep. You add a water softener, it's going to help clean it up. Yep. I've got a, a great YouTube video that explains how water softener works. Again, Matthew did a great job, but like I say, uh, if you're looking for some more information about that. So again, just quickly, these are the parts of a water softener if, you, if you're thinking about what they're called and how they're set up. So the valve is at the top, the media tank, is, is the, the tank, the, the big black tank. The media is what's inside. The brine well is the tube that's inside the brine tank. And then of course the brine tank 
So there are a couple of different kinds of uh, water softeners. What are they, Matthew? This is like a standard water softener. And then there's a high efficiency water softener that would use a lot less salt and a lot less water when it would go through its regeneration process. Um, so okay. this one would use about maybe 10 bags of salt a year for your family. Well, it depends on how hard your water is and how big your family is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whereas the smaller one would use probably three to four bags of salt a year. Now, can anyone get a high efficiency one? No. Yeah, no, it, it depends. It depends on your water test results. Exactly, and how big your family is. How many washrooms you have, yep. Yeah, and you know, there's some other factors in that involved too. How do you know when your water softener needs maintenance? When you get symptoms of hard water, uh, water softener stops using salt, too much water in the brine tank. We suggest routine maintenance on it normally every couple of years, or if you're starting to notice some of these symptoms, then it's a, probably a good idea that it needs a little bit of maintenance. Yeah, no, exactly. And what about if you're using your water softener to also get rid of iron? Will it need more maintenance or less maintenance? Oh, it will definitely need more maintenance. Yeah, no, exactly. What does the maintenance of a water softener consist of? Pretty much just adding salt. Uh, it, it takes care of itself. Um, as long as your water conditions are appropriate for, for the unit that you have, um, all that you would really need to do is add salt. And if you got iron in your water? You would need to add res, res care every so often, probably about half a cup once a year. And what other maintenance would you have to do because you have iron in your water? You would definitely have to take a look at the injector. If you have a little bit of iron in your water, I would say maybe every six to 10 years, you would have to take a look at that injector. But if you have a lot of iron in your water, then you're gonna need to be dealing with that injector at least once a year. Yeah, and when I talk about an injector, so the injector sits inside here. So inside this cover, and again, we got a YouTube video that goes through the whole process of how to clean that injector. But if you're using your water softener to remove iron, then that injector is gonna get dirty. It's gonna get clogged and it's gonna stop working. So here's a couple here and I'll show you. So it has, so what an injector does, it has a venturi inside, a very small hole in there. And what that does, it creates the suction to suck the brine from the brine tank and run it through this, this tank. But what happens is that little wee hole in the middle gets clogged with the iron and then it stops sucking up the brine and then it stops working. So these are relatively inexpensive and they're super easy to replace. And again, we've got a YouTube video that uh, will show you uh, how to do that. So what other uh, maintenance can you do on the water softener? Uh, clean out the brine tank every so often. Um, if you're not using, like if your salt starts to build up at the bottom because of the weight of the, the weight of the salt at the top sitting there for so long, it starts to create uh, salt dams in the bottom of the tank, so like clumps of salt. And uh, you don't want that because you want your water softener to work properly. Empty out that brine tank, give it a good clean, and then uh, add more salt back inside of it. Another thing is, is you should exercise the bypasses on top so you want to turn these valves every so often you don't have to do it every day or every week but maybe every couple months go go down to your unit and just make sure that they're spinning easily because if you ever do have a problem with the water softener you want to be able to turn them off so that you put it in bypass so that the water is still traveling to your house and what happens if you don't exercise the bypass after 5 10 15 years it could get stuck if it gets stuck then you might have a, a bigger issue on your hands than well, and um, if they can also leak. Yeah, yep. Yeah, that when you actually get around to bypassing it, then uh, you might actually end up having a leak. So obviously we want to avoid that. What else can you do for maintenance on your water softener? Preventative maintenance. You can add res care to the brine tank. Um, so again, you just take about a cup or so, this stuff here. If you, if you add a cup or uh, something like that once a year, that will definitely uh, keep that media cleaned up and, uh, and make it last a lot longer. One thing uh, Matthew was talking a little bit earlier about cleaning out the brine tank, which is a, a great idea. But one thing you can do, again, preventative maintenance wise, is you can, if you run out of salt once a year, I know it sounds weird, but r totally run out of salt once a year, you'll never have to worry about that bottom of the, the brine tank getting clogged with salt. And the other thing that you can do is before you add salt every time, stir it up a little bit like an old hockey stick or something like that and then add your salt and that will also go a long way toward uh, uh, getting a salt clog you know if you use that rock salt in your water softener and for years a lot of folks did what you'll find is when the when the, the salt gets really low in there it'll be brown just brown with mud 
from all the sediment that's in the bottom oh, really? of that. Yeah, so it's a good idea. If you run into that situation, it's a good idea to uh, clean that up. So we were talking a little bit earlier about types of water softer salt. And again, I've got a link to a YouTube video. Check that out down below there. One question that we're often asked is, what's the correct uh, salt level? Like how, how full should the salt be in, in my water softener? You want it to be just a little bit below the level of the water, correct? Or you want no. it to be at the same level as the water? No. The, the salt has to be higher than the water. Okay. okay. Because the water has to be touching the salt. So if the water is higher than the salt, the water that's above the salt isn't touching the salt, so it can't absorb it, so you don't get the right concentration of brine in, when it's going through its regeneration cycle. Now, the water softener controls the water in your brine tank. Who controls the salt? You do. Exactly. I put it in. Yeah. Exactly. So you need to control that um, by putting the right amount of salt. And again, like common theme here, right? But again, you'll see I've got a YouTube video that uh, goes through that whole process with you. And uh, if you're looking for more information about that. And again, uh, you know, we talked about uh, cleaning out that um, injector. Again, there's a YouTube video that talks you through the whole process. So I definitely encourage you to uh, check that out. We're, we're talking about maintenance here. So at the end of the day, you know, if you your water softener is working fine, it's going through its cycles, the salt is being consumed, but you're still not getting any soft water. What's the last bit of maintenance? Should you check the plumbing to see if there's maybe something bypassed? Well, you can check this at the plumbing, see if there's something bypassed, but at some point the resin's gonna wear out. Okay. And if the resin's worn out, then you would need to replace the resin. And again, I've got a YouTube video that shows you how to do that. Link in the description down below, and you can go that whole process. Now, it's not for the faint of heart. It's a messy process. In that video, I showed doing it in my house. Yep. And uh, it's a messy process, and it's not something you wanna do inside Side, no, you have to don't recommend doing it. Yeah, inside. I've, yeah. do, I've done it a couple times here at the store and you get wet and there's a lot of media that comes out. So you need a couple buckets. <laughs> yeah, no, exactly. So something else uh, that we talk about and something you may notice is that all of our water softeners that we have have these black jackets on it and they're a neoprene jacket. They're like scuba suit, right? And the reason we, we have them on there is because these tanks sweat. They sweat, they get mold on them. You know that black stuff that's on the outside of your tank? That's mold. Again, we uh, encourage you that if you don't have a neoprene jacket on your um, water softener, that uh, we have them available and uh, you can purchase it for it. And again, this YouTube video goes through uh, all about how they work, but uh, and also how to size them and that kind of thing. And the beauty of these jackets are that you just drape it around the tank and you zip it up at the back. You don't have to disconnect it. You don't have to do anything to your tank. You don't have to remove the plumbing or remove the valve or any of that kind of stuff. No way, you just drape it around, zip it up the back and it's good to go. And it's actually washable. So in five or 10 years, if you, if you do think that eh, it might be getting a little bit moldy, you just take it off, wash it, put it back on and you're good to go. And I was talking about our brand of uh, water softeners. So um, our brand is the Hume brand. So if you go to our websites, watereastore.com or watereastore.ca in Canada, you can see the Hume brand of water softeners and they all feature the CLAC uh, WS1 valve. So if you're in the market for a water softener, it's definitely something I encourage you to uh, check out. And if you're looking for more information about our CLAC water softeners, I definitely encourage you to go to our websites either watereastore.com in the US or watereastore.ca in Canada. We offer free shipping and discount pricing. Click here for your next video on water softeners and I'll see you there. Any questions or comments, add them down below.